All right. In the last video, we just got the warp portal for Snow Peak. But just before we got that though, well, we found a Howling Stone that was up on a frosty overhang up there on Snow Peak. And the location for that Golden Wolf, for that particular Howling Stone, is here in the Kakariko Village Graveyard. So now that we have the Warp Portal for Snow Peak, this is an excellent time to go ahead and go snag that hidden skill before we head on to the next dungeon. As you'll see, right after that Warp Portal, we'll pretty much be taken directly to the dungeon, so we're going to have to go gather anything you want to grab right now, such as potions and everything else. So this is a great time to go get that hidden skill. We want to head to the back of the graveyard and speak with Minda and take on your Hylian form. We'll encounter this familiar scene once again in which the Golden Wolf tries to bite off her head, and then we will once again be taken to this misty world just outside of Hyrule Castle. Now as usual, the Golden Wolf will howl and then taking on its undead soldier thing form known as the Hero's Shade. He warns us that the remaining techniques are not for the faint of heart, and that we will be risking our very lives in the pursuit of them. I am trembling. Once again, we will have to show him the previous hidden skill that we learned before. Uh, he will teach us the next one. So in this case, that is the Mortal Draw that we got from the Gerudo Desert. So you want to, once you gain control, you want to stand close to him, you want to sheathe your sword, stand close and press the A button to knock him down. With that, he will then applaud us our, of our performance and then grant us the sixth of the hidden skill out of seven, the Jump Strike. The Hero's Shade will explain that the jump attack is an effective sword technique against a single target, but it's awkward when used against multiple foes and will leave you quite vulnerable. So it's great for one-on-one -on -one combat, but once you start having more than one enemy, it starts getting a little bit awkward. So he now goes on to show you how to charge it up by holding down the A button, and then releasing it to unleash a powerful shockwave that will damage all surrounding enemies. This is great against weaker enemies in particular, it will kill them all in a single hit. So you'll then get a chance to try it out on the Hero's Shade, who will separate into several mirror images of himself. As soon as you gain control, you want to Z-target one, Press and hold the A button, and then release it to jump forward and strike your opponent. The shockwave will blast all the other near images as well. This is an effective skill that does a great deal of damage, and it will kill several enemies at once. So, on some of the harder enemies, it will take more than one hit, but a lot of the weaker ones, and even some of the medium strength ones, will actually kill them in a single hit. This is really awesome. It's a useful technique, especially for some of the upcoming dungeons, and also for the Cave of Ordeals. This one's really nice to have there. So just try and remember it. I actually have a tendency to forget to use it a lot, um, but it is a pretty cool technique. And we have just one more hidden skill to go, so we'll be getting that here relatively soon in a few chapters. Uh, so you should have six hidden skills so far. The Hero's Shade will then rambles on a bit about Courage and Link getting close to fighting the big baddies at the end of the game. Once he's done talking, he'll say farewell and will appear back in the graveyard in Kakariko Village. With that out of the way, we want to go ahead and warp back over to Snow Peak, where we'll continue heading towards the next dungeon. <laughs> Once you make it back, you'll find that the Beast Man is still right where we left him. Maybe he doesn't really move that quick after all. <laughs> you want to transform into your Hylian form and walk forward to initiate this cutscene in which we introduce ourselves. Turns out this guy, named Yeto, is very friendly and very loud. This is insinuated by the ginormous size of his font, similar to how Malo's text is very small. He can only say a few words for every little text box as a result, so I suppose it's a good thing that Nintendo decided to give him broken English then, huh? <laughs> he'll ask you what you're doing all the way up here and insists you must be on a spiritual journey. Either way you answer, he'll simply laugh at you and inform you it was just a joke. Yetis do joke, after all. After which, he'll then force you to tell him his life, your life story. So the screen then blank, blacks out, apparently because Link is speaking. Wouldn't want to show that, now would we? Yeto is very impressed that a human, or Hylian technically, would make such a lengthy journey to travel all the way up here, and he's willing to help you out too. He reveals that he has indeed seen a piece of the Mirror of Twilight, and that he even brought it to his house. He even invites you to come all the way down and share a meal with him. Well, this doesn't sound like it's going to be too hard to find this particular Mirror Shard, right? He then says to go down the mountain, you can ride all the way down just like he does. After smacking the tree with his fist, he'll jump onto the sled uh, thing, the leaf, and then he'll start sledding all the way down on a single foot. It's amazing that that thing can support all his weight, isn't it? <laughs> you think it would just totally, you know, he'd fall flat on his face after it crunches underneath him. So once that cutscene is over with, you want to roll into the tree yourself to make a leaf fall down that we can use ourselves. You want to jump on down and press the A button while standing next to it to hop on. We're snowboarding! As soon as you start, you want to hold down the A button and then release it in order to jump over the gap. Once you've done that, you can use the analog stick to move back and forth in order to aim and stuff, and you can hold forward to speed up and hold backwards to slow down. There are several secret areas you can get to by jumping up onto them to reach these upper areas where there's some extra rupees. I'll point out a few of them as I go, but they're not really that important, they're just totally optional. So you can gather them if you like, uh, a lot of them are kind of tricky, so I'm just going to show you most of them. 
Um, but as you go along, you'll up ahead you'll see there's a bridge, and you want to watch out for the gaps. You got to be prepared to jump over them. There's also some ice keys here as well. But as long as you don't crash or sit still for too long, uh, you should be able to totally ignore them and go right past them. You can slash them with your sword as you're passing if you want, or even use a spin attack and kill a whole bunch of them at once. But then up ahead, you'll want to get a good leap off this uh, jump here in order to reach some rupees that are top the trees. Don't be surprised if you miss though; it is kind of difficult. Up ahead, there's a ledge off to the right you can get on pretty easily if you like. This path is a little more treacherous than the one below, though. Uh, it's pretty easy to get up here, um, but if you don't want to do that and you're not really, if you're not really in the mood for a challenge, feel free to skip it. It doesn't really matter. Up here, you want to simply follow the rupees and be prepared to leap onto the next platforms. Try to stay pretty straight so you avoid falling into the abyss. Now you can take this upper path if you want. It would be good to, um, you know, get used to taking this path so that you can use this skill for the race later on. Um, you want to round the corners and hop down into this lower area. And at this point, you can hop down to the left if you want to go to the lower path. Uh, which we'll have to drop down here anyway, as you see. At the end, you want to be very careful not to hit the edges because um, they'll make you like swerve back and forth and then you'll fall into the abyss on either side here, which would be really lame because you have to start the area all over again. At the very end, you'll land and you'll smash the leaf. Aww. Next, you want to go ahead and turn around, and if it's night, you should see a Poe that is on top of the mound there. So, if you want to transform into a wolf and begin working your way up the platform. It spirals around, and it shouldn't be too hard for you to find the way up. Personally, I kind of uh, panic, and I want to take it really slow to make absolutely sure that I don't fall off into the abyss, because that would be lame to start this area all over again. At the top, you will find a, our ghosty little friend who is all lonely. You want to give it some attention, and then gather postal number 45. So that's everything we had to do up here, you know, like I say, this one's up here only at night. It's kind of hard to tell if it's night or day uh, when you're up here on Snow Peak because it's constantly blowing wind and everything. You'd think it would get quite a bit darker when it's night or you'd be able to see stars or something, but no. No, anyways, that's all we had to do up here. You want to head back towards the mansion, transform back into your Hylian form, and as soon as you get close, the Midna will mention that Yeto sure has a nice place for a beast man. So, thank you for joining me. That concludes this video, and it also concludes this chapter, fellas. Join me for the next one, and I will show you guys how to complete the Snow Peak Ruins.